Welcome to Straight Outta Compton's Kitchen. How y'all doing, as my Aunt Sadie would say, and as my Auntie Shug would say, y'all all right? And as my grandmother would say, show sure up. And as Peppa Pig would say, hello, grown-ups. Hey, I missed you guys. I really did. I missed you guys. I've been missing in action for the most part. I've been getting some things done. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. And of course, the um, gardener, he wants to talk to you guys too. He say, what's up? <sighs> All right. So uh, listen. Uh, now, where do I start? Well, let's start with my vision book my vision book this vision book lets me know what I've done and what I have yet to do and I just put everything in here and I put like a placeholder if it's still pending so the fictitious name statement go somewhere sit down Ugh. all right so my fictitious name statement that was the first thing that I had to do I had to file that with the recorder's office for straight out of Compton's kitchen because you can't be using anybody else's business name. Mm -mm, they don't like that. So you have to make sure no one else is using the name. So I took care of that. And of course, all of this costs money. So then they send you like a proof of publication because you have to file it with a newspaper. Mm -hmm. Now who's reading the newspaper to find out if anybody's using their name? I don't know. But anyway, I'm not using a newspaper like that. But anyway, you have to file your fictitious name statement with a newspaper. And then they publish it for four weeks. And then they let you know that, hey, you've been approved to use this name. So that's one thing. And then the other thing I had to do, I had to file with the Secretary of State, California Secretary of State. They approved me. Then I had to do a statement of information for a nonprofit corporation with the state of California. They approved me. Then I had to, not necessarily in this order because when you file with the state, you should already have your articles of incorporate, <coughs> your articles of incorporation in place. And uh, let's say, um, oh yeah, my bylaws, and then you have to have a board, an executive board, and some board members that are willing to work with you. So I had to establish my board, which I've done that. Thank you, board members. Straight out of Compton's Kitchen, board members, thank you. And then the IRS. Now that was what I was waiting for back in March, March 9th to the date. Today is May 9th. March 9th, I was still waiting to hear back from the IRS. And so here it is. I got my letter. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not it. This is my EIN number because you got to have a tax, a tax ID number associated with your nonprofit. So that's for that. But here's my IRS letter. And this is the determination letting me know that, yes, you can... You can operate as a nonprofit organization with tax exemptions. Oh, wait. Thank you, Lord. And here's my certification for my food handler. I'm not going to leave it up there because, you know, scammers are out there taking pictures. So I'm not going to leave it just up on the screen. All right. So then what I'm waiting on is what's called a welfare exemption and that gives me more tax exemptions for um, uh, a charitable organization, which is what I'm operating as, a charitable organization. So I also need the welfare exemption and I need what's called, I need to put a placeholder for that one, but what I'm waiting on also is to hear back from the board, the, the public health board, who will also give me a green light for serving food outside of my home. So I mailed all the paperwork to them. What they needed was my certification. I have to receive the certification as a food handler first. 
send them a copy of the certification and then I can go forward after they approve it. So I still can't really sell food or prepare food for the public until they have approved me. So hopefully, in fact, I already know it's going to be all right. It's already all right. And then the next thing I'm going to do is uh, a nutrition analysis because when I package the uh, protein bars for the homeless, um, I want them to know what um, is in the bars and how much protein is providing. So that's the next step. The other thing that I had to do, which is what I did last week, I was telling you all that it was a venture that I was on and it was soon to become an adventure. And that was to open the bank account. The other thing that I'm working on is my website. So you can, no, I'm praying <laughs> that you have the same heart that I have for the people and you will go to the website and make a donation. And that way we can make the protein bars and get them out there. We can give them fresh, clean water. And um, that's pretty much it. All right, so, so much more I could share with you, but I wanna tell you what the Lord woke me up with this morning. And I'm just gonna read it to you, okay? So, he says, to come, he's talking to me, but I want to share with you what he said to me. And I hope that it blesses your life. I'm telling you, it, it blesses me. So he says, to compare your life to how we come on this earth. We come on this earth with God's purpose and his plan within us. It's already in us. But we have to go through something in order to get to that place of knowing his purpose and his plan for our lives. We got to go through something. So if you could just picture a baby coming out of the womb, looking around. You know how these babies come out, especially nowadays. They just come out looking and like they're getting ready to say something. So, okay, you're looking around, you're exploring, you're tasting, putting stuff in your mouth that don't belong there, you're growing, you're walking, you're taking steps, you're falling down, you're getting back up, and you're, and you're walking, and you're learning, and you, before you know it, you're running. You're going to school. From one, get, from one grade, let me slow down just a little bit from one grade to the next. So when we're children and babies, we don't start out going to college. We have to go through some steps in order to get to college. And as children, you already know, hey Vern, if you're listening, there's your song. Um, I'm sorry, I, I got distracted. Little Santana. Okay, get back. Come on, Valerie. Come back. So as, all right. Usually what we do as children, it's already in us. I was always teaching my Barbie doll when I was coming up as a child. I was writing poetry in the sixth grade and my mother told me, she said, you're gonna be a writer. I'm like, no, you don't know me like that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, I dare not say that. But anyway, she said I was gonna be a writer and guess what I'm doing nowadays is writing. I wanted to be a court reporter. But now I can see my gift. I can see my calling. I can see my purpose. Even when I was in the workplace, I loved working on computers and learning different types of technology. And for many years, I worked with engineers for over maybe four decades, helping them with their requirements, dealing with satellites, yeah. 
And most importantly, the databases that I worked in, I created documentation to teach other people how to use the database. And right now, that's what I'm doing with my business. I'm teaching other people how to work on their behalf with their families with something called the Celebration of Life Toolkit. Now that doesn't come under the umbrella of Straight Outta Compton's Kitchen. That comes under the umbrella of Love to Praise Creations. And that's my business. Uh, Straight Outta Compton's Kitchen is my nonprofit organization. So I'm, I'm juggling two things at one time. And under Love to Praise Creations, I'm creating something called the Celebration of Life Toolkit. And it's to help families so that it's, it's helping them to take the guesswork out of where everything is located. So yes, you've done your um, living trust, you've done your will, etc etc but does anybody know where it is so that's what the celebration of life toolkit will do do they know um what accounts you have set up for automatic withdrawal that need to be closed as soon as your body expires etc etc but anyway that's what i'm doing i'm teaching people how to use the toolkit and so i'm a teacher i've been teaching since Barbie was, uh, not, you know, back in the 1960s, late 1960s, I've been teaching as a child. Uh, so anyway, uh, I've always had a heart for the underdog. As a child, when I watched other children being bullied, I took those people under my wing at school. Okay, they were my friends. Yes. And I've been bullied myself, so I know what it feels like. And um, I'm sensitive to other people and what they go through. My, my heart, oh my God. Oh my God. So the people who were bullied, uh, I took them under my wing. I had compassion for them. And I myself, like I said, I have been bullied. And um, as a sensitive person who's cared about how other people feel, um, that's what my nonprofit is all about. Having compassion. Um, never looking down on anyone. You know, now I mean, you gotta be careful. It doesn't mean that you need to just be going up to these people because some of them are, you know, they're dealing with some things, some demons in some cases. And so you have to use discernment and that kind of thing, you know, and ask God for discernment. But now that I'm hope, uh, now that I'm hope for the homeless um, and helping them, I'm getting things in order for them so that I can help them. So there are steps that I have to take before I can just start running. You know, we don't come out of the womb running. So, you know, we need to be nurtured and cared for and that kind of thing. And that's the same thing with whatever God has given us. We need to nurture it like a baby. Um, and I learned this uh, working with my mentor, the late Dr. Vicki Lee. She had a ministry, a nonprofit organization, where she presented a uh, platform for people who were in the church just sitting on their gifts, you know. So she had what like a training center and they would come to the training center and learn about ministry you know serving other people um doing funerals weddings how do you do all of that so um i was her secretary and i have the gift of organization i mean i, I may not be able to find things and always put my hand right on it i'm the most organized person that i know and i'm always looking for something but nonetheless, I know that that's my gift. Um, and so I was able to work with her and now I'm working with my aunt and I'm on her board helping children around the world. So you see how it is? It's little steps that get you to one level, 
and then you're able to mature and go on to the next level and do what God has called you to do. So I was teaching back then, um, working with Vicki, I was teaching how to start your own business. I was teaching how to start your own nonprofit. I was teaching how to get self-published. I did writer's workshops and things like that. Now, a whole lot has changed. <laughs> this is 2023. That was back in the early 90s when I was doing all of that. But let me... So one thing I wanted to say is, Dr. Vicki Lee, I speak your name. And I appreciate you for all that you've done for me. I'm the woman that I am today because of you. And um, I hope I don't get too emotional here. But um, she told me back in the early 90s, Valerie, start your own nonprofit. You're teaching other people how to start theirs. Start yours. And I said, mm -mm, I want to make some money. <laughs> I don't want Uncle Sam all up in my business with you know, um, the nonprofit organization, I want to, I want to do it for profit. And so, uh, I just know that she would be so proud of me that I have finally started. I have finally, finally started my own nonprofit. So guys, be encouraged. I love you. I want you to know that there are gifts, talents, callings on your life, in your life, in your mouth. You just got to walk in it. Walk by faith. And it's like if you just take one step, you'll discover, hey, I'm kind of balanced. You might fall back, but get back up and take another step. And before you know it, with that consistency, everything will just fall into place as it's falling into place for me. And I don't take any credit for it. I give all the glory to God. Amen. Be blessed.